ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين ثم اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا my dear respected brothers and sisters inshallah this khutbah will be extremely brief because the point has already been made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in today's social political discourse you hear a lot of talk about human rights women's rights and that's good that we recognize rights that everyone is supposed to have but there's a fundamental question where do we derive our rights from who gave you and i these human rights if you ask the champions of human rights and women's rights where do these rights come from sometimes people say these are universal rights what makes them universal is it because a few intellectuals determine that that those are the rights of people and they taught it in universities and then people said you know yeah those are the rights i'm saying that is a question we must all ask where do we derive our rights from the united states constitution has rights bill of rights given to every citizen and actually not only citizens but it also covers non citizens and we know that those rights were penned down by the founding fathers as this is part of the constitution i'm saying those rights are good but we know where they came from do we not there's something interesting about rights you know every time we start a khutbah we sometimes recite from the quran and we usually uh, recite from surah an-nisa the very first ayah of surah an-nisa where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says يا ايها الناس ومن كان اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده have consciousness of your lord who created all of you from a single person وخلق منها زوجها and from that single soul created its mate وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء but from the two of them the multitude of human beings you and i and then he says واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به have taqwa of Allah the one from which we derive our mutual right we seek our mutual rights from Allah we seek our mutual rights from Allah that's a very important statement in that ayah we read all the time but we never stop and reflect where do we get our rights from so take for instance women's rights today that women for thousands of years have been denied and still continue to be denied basic rights that we think they should have the right to inheritance owning property having a business these are rights which many women don't have all over the world women in america enjoy that and sometimes in other countries in europe but all over the world all women don't have the rights to inheritance they don't have the right to property some of them don't have the right to have a business some of them don't have the right to do many things that is fact that's the world but many times when people want to make the argument for women's rights or human rights they have to pick a villain they have to pick a villain to say this villain does not grant rights and today it appears to be popular to make islam the villain about human rights and women's rights so today inshallah 
let us set the record straight which Allah set over 1400 years ago before women in Rome had rights, before women in Europe today had rights, before women in any country in the world had rights. Allah said in this very surah called Surah An-Nisa. Right number one. وَآتُوا النِّسَاءَ صَدُقَاتِهِنَّ نِحْنَةً Allah says, give women their dowries freely. You give them wholeheartedly. The first time a wife had a right to the dowry itself, many cultures, the dowry goes to the father and it lands in his pocket and he gives you a wife. She sees not even a penny. Unfortunately, some Muslim countries today do that. Allah says, the dowry, the mahar, belongs to the woman. وَآتُوا النِّسَاءَ صَدُقَاتِهِنَّ نِحْلَةً فَإِنْ طِبْنَ لَكُمْ عَنْ شَيْءٍ مِّنْهُ نَفْسَةً فَكُلُوهُ هَنِيئًا وَمَرِيئًا Allah says, if she, by her own choice, gives part of that to you, then you can enjoy that. Make no mistake, the mahal belongs to a woman when you marry her. That's right number one. In some cultures, it's the wife that gives the husband a dowry. Till today. I think we should all move to that country and get married. Seriously. And if she does not bring enough mahar, she can be burnt alive. Burnt alive for not giving the husband enough dowry. Till today that exists. Inheritance, women could not inherit anything. Not in Rome, not in England, not in anywhere without going through hurdles. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this very surah, لِلْرِجَالِ نَصِيبٌ مِمَّا تَرَكَ الْوَالِدَانِ وَالْأَقْرَبُونَ وَلِلْنِسَاءِ نَصِيبٌ مِمَّا تَرَكَ الْوَالِدَانِ وَالْأَقْرَبُونَ مِمَّا قَلَّ مِنْهُ أَوْ كَثُوا Allah says that even if it's a small inheritance or lot, men have inheritance and women have inheritance. The first time in the history of the world documented that women are to inherit. And Allah went as far to give us in scripture the actual equations and proportions for this. Subhanallah. He says, وَلَكُمْ نِسْفُ مَا تَرَجَ أَزْوَاجُكُمْ إِلَّمْ يَكُنْ لَنَا وَلَكُمْ You get half of inheritance from your wife if she passes away when you have no children. But if she leaves children behind, you get a quarter. And then for her, she gets a quarter of your inheritance if you leave no children. But if you leave children, she gets an eighth. Allah specified even the portions. And he didn't leave it to the whims and chance of anyone. The right to inheritance. In the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given her the right to even choose to marry a person if not. Or maybe she could choose not to do so. Up till this day, a father can come home and say, Daughter, here's your husband. In some cultures, she has no say in it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the first time has given women the right to say, I don't want to marry this person. End of story. She has a choice not to marry whoever is presented. Islam gave women the right of choice in marriage. The right to not only own property by inheritance, but to have a business of her own and earn money, which her husband doesn't have right to take away because it's not his. The right to enter into a contract, Islam gave women. The right for men and women to be educated equally. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran that we must all know. فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ Every man and woman must be educated. First, about their Lord. And secondly, about their worldly affairs. Islam opened the door for women to become educated. The, you know, the Sahaba, their wives and the wives of the Prophet they had his time. They told the Prophet ﷺ, specify a day where you will only teach us. You spend so much time with the men. You need to set up a day. And they did. And he came and he taught them. The Prophet ﷺ made that an example. The right to education. And so on and so forth. For the first time in the history of humanity, Islam brought what we champion today as women's rights. And yet, Islam is always made أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters I would like to take the next few moments and make it a moment of introspection and that is you and I should look strongly at ourselves and ask why is Islam made the villain? One of the reasons why, the other reasons don't matter, because people will always hate Islam, they will always be those. So one of the reasons that I care about the most is the reason you and I give them. Why is it that there are more uneducated women in Muslim countries than others? Why is that? Why is it today in Muslim countries, if a woman wants to go to school, she could get killed or have acid splashed on her face? Why is that? Why is that? You see, Muslims have forgotten the rights that Allah had given women in the Quran. These rights. And we have not uphold the laws of Allah for a little girl to be shot, nearly killed in a Muslim country just because she wants a little bit more education. That is a sorry state of Muslims. We say the first verse of Surat al-Nisa always when we start a khutbah, but we don't reflect upon its meaning. Allah gave women those rights. That's why Allah himself even revealed the very portions they're supposed to inherit. And today in Muslim countries, I guarantee you, father, when you die, your daughter will not inherit from you. Your brothers, your uncles will come and take everything from your wife and the children. That is fact. It is because we have forgotten the rights given to, by Allah to women and we stopped implementing it, so now Islam has been made the villain. I'm saying you and I must change that. We must stand up firmly for the rights which Allah guaranteed men and women. Rights don't come fictitiously from the sky. What are universal rights? Rights come from Allah, point number one. They don't come from a body of people that sat down together and determined that to be the right. The one who created us gave rights. You have the right to believe in whatever you want to believe. Allah says, فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَالْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَالْيَكْفُرْ It's not the United States Constitution that gives you a right of freedom of religion. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But make no mistake, if you don't believe in Allah, Allah says there is a consequence. إِنَّا أَعْتَدْنَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ نَارًا أَحَاطَ بِهِمْ سُرَادِكُهَا Allah says, believe what you want to believe, but I will hold you accountable on the day of judgment for it. It's not the U.S. Constitution that guarantees freedom of religion. Allah did. لا إكراه في الدين قد تبين الرشد من الغيب You see, we have forgotten the very book that was revealed by Allah through Jibreel. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we read it every Ramadan, but we forget what is in it. I am criticizing myself and everyone who calls themselves a Muslim to say, let us stand up for human rights and women's rights. But don't forget, those rights come from Allah and they've already been documented in the Quran. And unfortunately, some Muslims, they themselves point the gun at Islam and say, Islam, take rights away from women. Can anybody give me one right of a woman that Islam does not guarantee? and I will give you a right which shaitan is giving them. Some people say it's woman's right to do whatever she wants with her body. So therefore, if your wife is pregnant and she, she chooses to terminate it, it's her right. That's ludicrous and nonsense. Why would a woman be married? In Islam, guess what? Both husband and wife have a right to have children. One cannot deny the other that right. To the point Allah made it a commandment وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ مِنْ إِمْلَى نَحْنُ نَوْزُقُكُمْ وَإِيَّاهُمْ Why do people sometimes commit, you know, abortions? You know what they say? We don't have enough money to pay for the child. Allah says, I give the risk. Who are you to determine where it comes from? So, if somebody says, I want the right to terminate just because I feel like it, go right ahead, take one more life, we will stand in front of Allah. But let no Muslim say, Islam takes away rights of anyone. They are wrong and they have forgotten that Allah gave human beings 
their rights, which other countries and constitutions are claiming as theirs. Allah already gave it. It's already in the Quran, and we read it every day, but we fail to implement it. So rather than leading the world in human rights, we are behind the villain. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا إن الغفور رحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي بالحق ولا يجزع عليك اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وانصر الإسلام والمسلمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وعقيم الصلاة Allah Akbar, 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 Allah Ak